I think two lectures in this module and then most of the lectures will be in the next module. So there are a few things I would like to mention is that I would prefer you if, if you don't understand anything at any point during the lecture, just raise your hand and you can ask any questions anytime. You can stop me and I'll, I'll try to you know, explain the things. And secondly, a little bit discipline in the class would be better. And the format of the lecture is that we have normally, you know, the learning outcomes at the beginning of lecture and we try to, you know, link them with your assessment quite strictly. So if you, when you are preparing for your uh, module exams, if you focus on those learning objectives, most probably you are going to answer your questions very easily. So the, today's session is the front line of immune system. By the end of this session, you should be able to compare the two arms of immune system, that is innate and adaptive immunity. Describe the innate immune barriers, their causes of disruption and their clinical significance. And finally, describe the response of innate immune cells after recognizing the pathogen during the first and the subsequent exposure. So the overall uh, things that will be discussed and the flow will be, uh, we'll first talk about, because this is your first session about immunology, we'll talk about certain concepts and terms that are very important, which will be repeated again and again. So I'll try to explain those first in context with the immune response. Then the first line of barriers, the second line of our immune defense, which is in the form of innate immunity, and the difference between innate and adaptive immune system. And finally, what component of the innate immunity helps and directs the adaptive immunity? So we'll start off with a case scenario. A 50-year-old male patient was admitted to the intensive care unit. Patient was in coma. The patient was on respiratory support, whereby an endotracheal tube was inserted. A week later, patient was feverish and showed symptoms and signs of respiratory infection, which is pneumonia. Now the question is, why this patient has infection in the first place? Yes, please. The respiratory system is not working well. Anyone else? Yes, please. Okay, so your colleague is saying that because of putting in the endotracheal tube. All of you know what is endotracheal tube? No. 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 So, have you heard of endoscopy? Yeah, so it's a camera inserted and endotracheal tube is actually the first step. So you have to first insert a tube into the trachea. So it's a foreign object which is done for medical intervention. That can be for, uh, you know, removing a foreign body which has, you know, stuck somewhere or for introducing the camera. So it's a foreign body that is inserted into this particular patient. So he's saying that it's most probably because of the endotracheal tube. Do you agree with this? Is it is it fair enough that this could be the possible cause of uh, the infection? No. no. He has a weak immune system. He has a weak immune system. Okay. So what makes you think that he has a weak immune system? So uh, another thing that I would like to clarify is, you all come here for learning. Don't hesitate at all. Any answer is right or wrong that doesn't make difference you have to participate and that's the only way to learn yes he, yeah fair enough if he's in coma so his immune system is most probably under stress it's weak yeah he says after inserting the endotracheal tube, he's feverish. He has inflammation. He has inflammation. Very good. Actually, this has brought us to certain things that uh, what an endotracheal tube can do, what exactly a weak immune response is. 
then one of your colleague is saying that it is because of inflammation so we'll talk about all these things one by one and then we'll get the answer to this as well and you know in a very clear way so let's start with uh, what is self and non-self have you heard these two terms what is self and what is non-self So what do you think is the main function of our immune system? Okay. Okay. No. Okay. Just chair. So somebody said that immune system function is to defend our body from what it's going to defend your body? Antigens. And what about pathogens? Okay, let's be a little more specific. So your immune system is going to defend your body from pathogens. Can you name a few pathogens? Virus. Bacteria. Very good. Parasites, fungi. So you have got a set of pathogens which are viruses, bacteria, parasites and fungi. If I ask you what is it made up of? Every bacteria, every virus, every parasite uh, structurally what is it made up of? Okay very good. RNA nucleic acids. Then what else? Cell membrane. Sorry? Phospholipids. Yes, cell walls have phospholipids. Proteins, does that make, uh, viruses have got protein core, bacteria have got cell wall and cell membrane, they have got proteins. So proteins, somebody said nucleic acid, phospholipids, lipids, and sometimes there is carbohydrate as well. So these are the structural components of all the pathogens. So let's write some things like bacteria, Can you all name some of the organs of our body? Skin. Skin. Eye. Eye. Stomach. Spleen. Spleen. Kidney. Pancreas. Heart. Let's write all of them. Now my next question is, what are these structures made up of? Tissues, cells, are they made up of proteins? Yes. Okay, our immune system job is to defend your body from the pathogens. Okay? And at the same time, I'm now taking it a little bit further, it's going to protect your body also from any extra damage. So while you are fighting, so whenever there is a fight somewhere, you know, there is a, a bomb attack or a, or a cannonball, there is always damage to the area where that fight is taking place. That's a normal phenomena, okay? So the immune system makes sure that there is a fight going on, it should happen to eliminate the pathogen, but at the same time, with minimum damage 
okay or to protect unnecessary damage so for example if a pathogen is in spleen the immune system attacks the pathogen in the spleen it's going to make sure that the other structures of the spleen are not damaged so that's one thing and if that occurs once the pathogen is eliminated it's removed from the body to do the repair as well so that's the whole thing you know if you want to explain what your immune system does it is going to protect your body from the pathogens not only from the pathogens we'll go a little bit further but first to explain this part that it's going to protect your body from the pathogens bacteria viruses parasites or fungi and make sure that there is little or minimum damage to your body and finally if there is some damage to help in repair so far everything is clear now non-self are basically the pathogens that are coming from outside the body whether they are bacteria viruses parasites or fungi and on the other hand self is the structure of your own body spleen kidney pancreas skin as you all named it all the structures of your own body are self all the things that are coming from outside they are non-self now if you see something which is common in between the two are these kidney is made of protein bacteria is made of protein spleen is made of protein and lipids viruses are made of proteins so how does your immune system differentiate between self and non-self that's the actual you know thing that immune system specializes in it can very well recognizes that this protein that is coming from a bacteria it is bad for, for the body it's coming from outside so I have to destroy it I have to eliminate it that's the function of the immune system that's why if you look at the slide the main immune response is to differentiate between self and non-self and what it means is that to differentiate between the protein of the self and to differentiate between the protein of the non-self now everyone is clear what is self and non-self okay let's go further what is the difference between infection and inflammation one of your friends said that inflammation he mentioned in the case scenario can anyone tell me what's the difference between infection and inflammation very good Anyone else would like to add something to it? Very good. So he's telling us about the four signs of inflammation. Redness, swelling, pain and loss of function. Which, so you hit your hand. Now somebody said that it's because of the infection. Yes? very good actually he's right that it's a sign of inf infection so when infection occurs it will lead to inflammation now I'll put it a little more slightly more differently that it's the tissue response to infection or to any assault or damage now what I mean by that any damage it can be physical you hit your hand next day you see or after a couple of hours it is red it is swollen it is painful if you cut your hand if you there is a burn to your skin or there is uh, you know exposure to any chemical so any sort of assault whether it is physical chemical UV light burn surgery trauma or pathogen all of them will cause tissue damage and the response to tissue damage is inflammation okay so the triggering thing is tissue damage you cause the damage and the response of your tissue is in the form of inflammation but it is not just infection infection can cause inflammation trauma can cause surgery can cause you know physical injury can cause UV light can cause burn can cause so you should be very clear that it's the trauma it's the damage that is caused by any of these assaults resulting in tissue response that is in the form of inflammation so far it's okay now the next thing is infection is caused by microbes for sure these are the microbes that are causing infection what type of antigen do microbes fall into now somebody said two three times I heard some of you saying antigens so let's you know go into the details of antigen yes please the difference between microbes and 
is the same two different names okay microbes come from microorganisms pathogen comes from the organism that results in pathology okay so microbes and pathogens are similar they are just two different you know scientifically they are slightly different but it means the same thing these four categories anything else Yes, please. Uh, so, uh, when, uh, whatever caused the tissue damage, it will lead to inflammation. Yes. So, anytime there is a damage to the tissue, the tissue is going to react in the form of inflammation. So now, we'll talk about another term antigen. So here you can see this particular uh, figure, it shows you all the possible things like fungi, toxins, parasites, protozoa, bacteria, viruses, which are all the microbes. And then there are two another important terms written here. At the top you can see it's written cancers. And then at the bottom it's written itrogenic procedures. What does these two mean? Cancers, tumors, metastatic benign or malignant so you'll be maybe surprised to know that all of you know immune system as defending your body from infections but it's not just that it also protects you from tumors so whenever your body recognizes tumor cells benign or malignant they are trying to kill them and now a lot of research is going on in the on the biological therapies instead of chemotherapeutic agents against the cancers so we'll talk about that there will be lectures on all these things but just to give you a little bit of hints so that you know what's coming in the coming lectures then itrogenic procedures we have already talked about it in the scenario so that's the hint for you endotracheal tube so any procedure that is performed by the healthcare professionals and if it leads to a disease or it leads to a, a complication that are that is called as itrogenic procedures okay now the word antigen initially when this word was kind of uh, coined anti stand for antibody and gen stands for generation or production antibody production any molecule any molecule that is capable of producing antibody that's why it was given the name antigen but that's not the correct name okay the correct name is something else but before explaining that our immune system is broadly divided into two types of immune responses one is called as innate immune response innate the word innate means inborn something you are born with so every one of us has got an innate immune system an inborn immune system or another third name for it is native immune system okay there are certain special special characteristics of this particular immune response it does not change so what it is today it will be tomorrow it will be after 10 years and it does not matter how many times you are exposed to that particular bacteria or virus the innate immune response stays the same but the second group which is called as adaptive immune system it is acquired that's the second name for it okay so acquired immune response or adaptive immune response it changes and it is different among all of us as well we'll talk about that also later on so at the moment what you need to remember is that the first time if somebody has never been exposed to let's say typhoid if he is exposed to that typhoid the first time adaptive immune response will be very weak it has to take time to acquire it to become stronger against it so first it changes the magnitude the strength with which the acquired immune system works it changes the first time it's weak next time it becomes stronger and after further exposure it's very very strong the reason for that is it has got memory 
so the small specialized cells are kept as memory so one time you are exposed to that pathogen acquired immune response memorize it and it just stay calm and wait for the next time that pathogen enters so the next time when it enters it's going to attack stronger and better and then the third time it's even more better so the difference main difference is in it you are born with it there is no difference acquired it changes with time it has got memory and it changes in strength from first exposure to the next exposure now i am telling you this initially because both these systems have got cells and soluble humoral components so two two in each cells of the innate immune system they include for example macrophages dendritic cell i'll show you all these cells and components slowly and the humoral components for example complement proteins so we'll just hear all of you know what is a neutrophil here we will write complement in these cells b lymphocytes and T lymphocytes and here antibodies so if you see innate immune system has got cells and humoral component adaptive immune system has cells and humoral component the cells of innate immune system I've just drawn neutrophil here just at the moment then the humoral has complement proteins adaptive immune system has got B lymphocytes and T lymphocytes and humoral component is antibodies antibodies are Y shaped structure soluble in blood and they have got lot of functions and lot of types we'll go into that as well in detail so I started with the definition of antigen antigen is any molecule capable of binding to the receptors of adaptive immune system so here at the moment we have a B and T lymphocyte so the B and T cells of the adaptive immune system they have got receptors any molecule which is capable of binding to these two any molecule whether it is protein carbohydrate lipid nucleic acid anything which can bind to these two receptors qualify for antigen is this clear okay now a little bit more if that molecule which binds to them can also initiate an immune response then it is called as an immunogen I'll repeat it again first thing is that any molecule protein carbohydrate lipid nucleic acid capable of binding to these receptors receptors of the adaptive immune system then it qualifies for antigen forget the initial definition of antibody production you know that is no more valid then if it is going to start an immune response whether innate or adaptive it will be called as an immunogen Then there are certain molecules which are antigenic in nature they can bind to these two receptors but they should not cause you an immune response they should not start an immune response and the example of that is allergens or the ones that cause allergy have you heard of any allergies people have allergies to pollens to dust to antibiotics to peanuts to milk to eggs 
Now all these things should not cause an immune response. You know, if all of us are eating eggs, why should I have a response to it? Our immune system should not respond to it. But some people unfortunately have a hyper responsive state and those antigens which cause allergy are termed as allergen. Okay. Then another important thing in this figure, what you see is in the small window, you see bacteria, for example. Okay, and these bacteria are, you know, the part of bacteria which will act as an antigen, which will bind to the receptor, that is called as an antigen. And then in the antigen, there is another small portion which exactly come into the contact with the receptor. So, for example, if I draw a big bacteria here, and this small part of it is the antigen. Okay, so I cut it out just for example for, for the sake of simplicity. Now this is the antigen and this antigen is going to bind to this or this receptor but this particular part and this particular part it will come in contact with these receptors. This portion is called as epitope. Okay, so you have a big bacteria a part of it is called as antigen that will bind to the uh, which will come into contact with the receptors but the specialized area which comes into direct contact with the receptor that is called as an epitope now there are these other three terms allergens i have already explained that yes yeah Humoral means any, so you will hear the word humoral a lot of time, anything which is soluble in the blood. You cannot touch it, you can, it's not uh, a precipitate or it's not like a solid thing, it just dissolves in the blood. And some of the examples are chemical mediators like complement protein. There is a complete lecture on complement protein. So I just want to give you certain terms and important things that later on when I'll come to those lectures, you are not surprised that what is this from where it is coming. So f at the moment, what you need to remember is two main branches of the immune system, innate and adaptive. Innate has got cell and humoral components it's more easy to re remember it this way and then the adaptive has got cells and humoral component the cells of innate immune system are neutrophils macrophages dendritic cells eosinophils basophils we'll see that in the coming slides and the adaptive immune cells are B lymphocytes and T lymphocytes then the humoral component is antibody B and T lymphocytes have got their own receptors if a molecule is capable to bind to these receptors that will be called as an antigen and the specialized portion that come into contact with the receptor is epitope then an antigen now on one side we are talking about is physical structure on another side its functions so an antigen that can initiate an immune response what is it called immunogen, immunogen. but an antigen which re results in allergy what the allergen okay so that will be called as an allergen Then there is another term called heptin. Heptin is a type of an antigen which is very small. Its molecular weight is very small. And the special thing about it is that alone heptin cannot cause an immune response. And the example of that is penicillin. It has to bind to some other protein, a carrier protein, to make it a proper immunogen. So it is antigen initially. It can. So that's why now you can understand or you can see why we have defined it properly. Because heptin is an antigen. But can it generate an immune response? Is it an immunogen as well? It has to become immunogen after binding to a carrier protein. Okay. Then the final word, tolerogen. In, in the beginning, I told you that kidney, spleen, pancreas, stomach, all these structures were made of proteins. And all those proteins are same proteins like proteins from the bacteria or viruses. So how does your immune system differentiate between the two? 
that goes to the development of these T cells and B cells. So when our immune system is producing T and B cell and they get educated in the thymus, there is a structure in the you know neck. They are told you will never attack these structures or they delete all those bad harmful cells. Okay, so all the harmful cells in your body which can attack your immune system, which can attack your uh, structural organs, they are all destroyed or deleted from the body. So the proteins of your body proteins are called as tolerogens. You know what, what does the word tolerance mean? Yes, calm or patience or, you know, uh, kind of uh, have the compatibility to stay together. Now, tolerance, to have tolerance against your own bacteria is protein, spleen is protein. So what 